In this section, we'll look at the culture of the Great Depression all the way through the 1930s. We'll start with kind of the icon of the Great Depression, the uh, so-called Oki fleeing to California. With the dust storms, the, uh, many people packed up and uh, just went fled to, to Southern California. There were no interstates, so people took U.S. Highway 66, which is famous in American cultural lore. Today, it's a, a, a route where you see a lot of kitsch and whatnot all the way to L.A. Of course, the uh, inf infamous Oki for the Great Depression was uh, made famous by John Steinbeck's uh, novel, The Grapes of Wrath. In addition to the cultural icon of John Steinbeck's Oki fleeing to California during the Great Depression, you tend to think of the end of Prohibition. Prohibition ended in large part because the nation had other more important things to think about. People wanted to drink in bad times. Also, they wanted an end to the crime that was associated with prohibition, and they wanted the tax revenue that could be raised by having legal drinking. The 21st Amendment to the Constitution was ratified in December 1933 and repealed the 18th Amendment, which had enacted prohibition. Prohibition had lasted 13 years, 10 months, and 19 days, and quickly uh, public houses and bars and cocktail parties had all sort of sprung up again. In addition to the radio, people looked for inexpensive entertainment, such as the board game Monopoly, where players tried to avoid bankruptcy. The movie industry during the 1930s didn't decline. Surprisingly so, people, it turned out, wanted to escape their miserable lives, and the movies were uh, worth the cost for many. The people that went to movies were more interested in seeing screwball comedies such as like the Three Stooges or the Marx Brothers than they were movies about poverty or economic distress. People liked uplifting movies, for example, the dancing of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. One of the more famous of the 1930s films was the Civil War classic Gone with the Wind. It was an exception uh, in, in its popularity and because it, it depicted uh, economic hardship. Some films romanticized an earlier period, such as Frank Copper's 1939 movie Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, starring Jimmy Stewart. A new genre of movie was the gangster movie, obviously a reaction to the gangster crime of the 1920s. It made famous the actor James Cagney, and of course, westerns and gangster movies remain popular today. As an interesting sidebar, the 1930s included efforts to criminalize marijuana, and as part of that process, there was the film Reefer Madness, which shows people smoking marijuana and committing murder and going crazy. Today, the movie is sort of a, a cult classic. When it came to music, certainly folk music reflected the popular suffering. Woody Guthrie from Oklahoma took to the road at the height of the Dust Bowl and sang of migrant economic refugees. He was a, a hero to the labor and the radical populist. People wanted heroes, and in June 1938, Superman first appeared in a comic book. It quickly spread to radio. Batman first appeared in the uh, same comic book a, a year later, in, in May 1939. In the 1920s, two sociologists, Robert and Helen Lind, had published a book called Middletown, which looked at American culture in the town of Muncie, Indiana. In the 1937, they, uh, they published a, another volume, Middletown in Transition, and looked at how that culture in Middle America had changed. And what they found was that Americans still held firm to their traditional faith and democracy and capitalism, despite the economic uh, uh, uproar. In fashion, things didn't change that much. People were still trying to keep up the image of style and success. Men still dressed up, sporting fedoras and double-breasted overcoats often. Uh, boys would wear short shorts and uh, high socks. The women kept their hair close to their head and fur was in, as were floral patterns. Makeup was chic and, and uh, Basically, shoulder pads were, were popular, at least until the late, late 1930s. Although hats were still popular for women, they were probably less so as time went on. 
One way to tell if clothes were from the 1930s is to see if it has initials engraved on it because uh, initialing names onto clothes was a, a, a common service that many stores offered for, for free. People still like sports, although the planned ballpark expansions in the 1920s, the renovations that were planned uh, were delayed throughout the Great Depression, and players were often paid much less. But nevertheless, we do see new heroes emerging in the sports world, uh, two specifically Joes, Joe DeLewis in boxing and Joe DiMaggio in baseball. It was a tough time for women, of course, but we do see one female icon of the air, Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic, uh, which she received the Distinguished Flying Cross for. She wrote a number of books and uh, sort of, once again, challenged the stereotype of the weak, dependent female. In 1937, she attempted to circumnavigate the globe in a Lockheed Electroplane, but vanished in the Central Pacific near Howland Island, probably because of a lack of gas. Her vanishing made her even more of a cultural icon, and it continues to today. Racism certainly continued in the 1930s. As one example, in Scottsboro, Alabama, nine young men were uh, accused of rape by two white women, who may have been uh, prostitutes, hitching a, a ride on a freight train. The women's stories contained many inconsistencies, but within weeks a, a white jury had convicted all nine defendants. Eight received death sentences. After the U.S. Supreme Court overturned the sentences because the defendants had been denied adequate legal counsel, five of the men were again convicted and sentenced to long prison terms. Across the country, the Scottsboro Boys, as they were known, inspired solidarity within African American communities. Among whites, the Communist Party took the lead in publicizing the case, which was really uh, the only white organization to do so. It helped raise support for the Scottsboro Defense uh, Committee, which uh, raised money for legal efforts on the defendant's behalf. Throughout the 1930s, the nation sort of stressed uh, unity and nationalism. We're all in this together. We sort of come, come together and persevere. Uh, we see them stressing what brought, made America special, the, the independence and perseverance and hard work. And it's during the 1930s when the phrase, the American way of life, becomes uh, part of the common vernacular. In 1937, for example, when the uh, John D. Rockefeller died, the press made a big thing of it because he'd, he'd persevered through hard times and ultimately made, made a lot of money. This concludes the section on uh, the culture of the 1930s and the Great Depression.